Hello you absolutely amazing people and welcome back to Comic Hunters where we go out and about looking for comic books wherever we can. I'm Comic Rob, let's get going. As you can see, it's another glorious day in the fields. Well, of course it is, because when this was being filmed, it was August. Yes, yes, I know. It's uh, doing other videos seems to push comic hunters back and back, and uh, I keep just falling behind a little bit, being self-employed as well. But we're still here. We're still trying to do this, and I actually found some really good stuff today, which leads me to the question of: Would you guys like to know more about the comics I pick up? like if there's a first introduction of a character or just something random about the comic, if it is even that special or if it's just filler or if it's a variant cover or something like that, would you guys like to know or are you just happy to be going, there's the comics, look how awesome they are, amazing artwork. Let me know down in the comments what you prefer, but I prefer it all. I love everything, to be honest. If you want to know it, I will happily research more about it. And if I know, then I know. So let's get into the comic, shall we? If you were paying attention in the video, you saw this one, and that is an Alien Number One variant cover edition. And I mean, it's just perfect. The Xenomorph coming out of the water, attacking the Marine there. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Mwah. Next up is a Star Wars comic, a Dark Horse Comics Star Wars comic, issue zero. It's an American entertainment exclusive, and it follows Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker in another story in between the original movies. You've got to love some comic filler. So we've got Gru the Wanderer. I don't know anything about this comic, <laughs> as always. Uh, is this a part of Marvel or is this Epic Comics or is Epic Comics part of Marvel? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But there's also, does anyone know how to remove the stickers? Because I struggle with stickers and this one's got a big one right on the front cover. Let's see what I can do about that. Here we go now, we got some classic ROM. That's right, this is number 45 from August 1983. So this guy is a guy who sacrificed himself to save his planet and now it lives as a space knight. Defending against evil, I guess. So most people wouldn't have heard of these guys. This is Strike Force. Monturai. I think I said that right. We are about to die. This is issue number five from 1987, which is awesome. So the premise of this is basically aliens have kind of like taken over the earth, and wiped out the human race, and they've kind of invented a machine that gives super people superpowers, and they fight back against the aliens. So I thought this was Green Arrow at first because it's from DC. It's an eight issue mini series and this is Outlaws, the legend of the man they call Hood. Number two from 1991. And I'm annoyed with this comic because it's got a giant gash or something in the front of it and it's kind of right in front of my face and I can't stop staring at it. And it's kind of, yeah, it's upsetting when that happens. I'm still gonna read it, it's just annoying. Next, we have Tales of the Legion of Superheroes, Election Day, number 335 from 1986. So if you don't know who these guys are, they're basically are a bunch of time-traveling superheroes who help out Superman quite a lot back in the early days, but they're from the future, so nice sci-fi goodness. So we've got a new guy now, Jem, son of Saturn. I don't know anything about this guy, that's why he's new to me anyway. Jem versus... Cooler to the loser, death. 
<laughs> sounds pretty cool. I'm quite intrigued by this. This looks really sick just by the front artwork, really. A 12 part maxi series? Son of a bitch, I need to collect them all now. And now I have four swamp things. Number 28, 34, 38, and 39. These things look awesome from the 1980s, 84 to 85. These are wicked, I love these. But in the corner of one of them, number 38, looks like a little mousey's been having a go at it, little bastard. I realize I have a lot to get through now, so let's start doing this a bit quicker. I've got Justice League America, it's number 65, 66, and I think that's 41 as well. Great gap fillers in my collection. And to go along with that, we've got some Justice League Europe as well. Unfortunately, what is it, number 35 is actually fallen from the staples. Unfortunately, you're going to get that in a big group like this, but it happens. But who on earth is Sil Crimson Fox? I was going to say Silver Fox, but that's Crimson Fox. I can't wait to find out her story. So now we're getting into the stuff that's really exciting me. So now we have end of today, zero hour, crisis in time number four. Awesome. And we also have Crisis on Infinite Earths, number 12 as well. I can't wait for these books. I can't wait to read these books. I need to get the rest of them. But these are awesome. Crisis on Infinite Earths, amazing. I can't believe I picked this up in a bundle. Would you believe it? In great condition. Time for some action comics. Superman and the Teen Titans, 584. The Man of Steel is out for blood and only... That guy can stop him? Well, it's a bit odd, really, isn't it? But who doesn't like a demonic Superman? That's going to be a great read. Let's stick with Superman with Armageddon 1991 with Superman in Action Comics 670 from 1991. But you'd you believe? And I should have used this one in my Halloween bid. Superman, the Man of Steel. Curse of the Atomic Skull. Looks very old school horror movie-esque. Love it. And yet another Superman, but this is the anniversary issue, number 400 from 1984. Look at that artwork on the cover. I mean, it just screams you want it, you have to have it. So I do. <laughs> but this guy got a lot of flack for the longest time. That's Aquaman Into the Abyss, number one. That's right, it's number one, and it was the only one in this massive pile that I got that actually had a cover on it. Luckily, it had a cover on it. It does not have a board, but never mind. Because it can't be choosers and all that, but it is in um, great condition. Just great to see Aquaman in a new series. So I secretly have been building a big Animal Man collection. Because it went, it started from DC, but then sort of went into, what is it, Vertigo Comics, which is part of DC, but they're more of the darker, grittier stuff that DC can't get away with at times. This is number 40 from 1991, War of the Gods. Can't wait to read a full story of this. Let's go ahead into Marvel now with Doctor Strange number 70. How amazing is that? It looks amazing and it feels amazing. I'm shocked in this condition. It's from 1984. Again, I'm just blown away with the condition of this. Awesome. I need to figure out how to get stickers off though. So I have a big collection of this and that is Thor, the mighty Thor. 361, I know I don't have this. It's gonna go in beautifully in my collection. Don't me wrong, it's a little bit kind of warped in a sense, but I'm hoping I could maybe get that out once I get it bagged and bored properly. Let's see how it goes. So now it's time for one of the oldest families in comics and that is the Fantastic Four. This is 270, which does have a couple first appearances like the appearance of Mixtrix and Wilberforce and the Zudamites. Yep, I think I pronounced them right. But then we also have 220, uh, 277, which does have an apparent death of a serious character. Ooh. Then we have 286, with the special appearance of the Uncanny X-Men. You've got to love it, people. Great ones for the collection. Now the most lovable rock you'll ever see, Thing. That's right, but this is The Thing versus The Things. That's right, Things. The first appearance of the things is the first appearance of the, or was it Grim, the sorcerer as well. It's also the first appearance of a worm-like creature that then dies. No spoilers, it just happens. <laughs> now I think this looks awesome. The whole space theme of it, it looks so good. Iron Man 215, beginning a new era of greatness. It just looks awesome. 
Oh, beautiful. So if you're fans of The Incredible Hulk, you know this, the abominations. Or the abominations, I should say. So, unfortunately, one of them, again, is falling away from the staples. It happens. It's issue number one and two. Luckily, it's number two that's falling away from the staples. I say luckily, but it's always unfortunate. It happens, though. When you're buying a big bundle like this, you're bound to get some that don't survive, unfortunately. So I've finally done it. I've completed another set. That is a one to four issue limited series, the X-Men and the Micronauts number one to four i picked it up in this bundle and they're all in wicked condition i can't complain don't get me wrong number four is probably the worst one out of a lot of them but it's still okay it's still okay but yeah i can happily read a storyline without having to worry what's going to happen next so now we have the new mutants number 92 from 1990 and this is an odd one because on the cover it says whoops we gave away this issue's shocking ending with this cover but what the heck enjoy the carnival of death anyway oh well i'm sold i can't wait to read this now it's time for x-men unlimited guest starring the silver surfer from 1996 number 13 fugitive from space epic looking front cover to be honest so i know this video has been going on a while thank you for sticking around i'm going to try and speed it up for you Let's go. Now we have an Uncanny X-Men annual, number seven from 1983. Looks like they're about to get in a real big fist fight with all the classic heroes on the front. In brilliant condition, I have to say. Let's go. So now we have some Uncanny X-Men again, number 187 and 213. Awesome, it looks like something's sucking the soul out of Storm there. How awesome is that? Now it's time for some more X-Men, but this is normal X-Men. X-Men number 13, Hazardous Territory. And a 20th anniversary issue, X-Men 175. How awesome does that cover look though? The massive fight scene with Phoenix. Oh, I can't wait to read that. So I know nothing of the Micronauts other than the videos I've watched of other YouTube who, the YouTubers who absolutely love these guys. There's one YouTuber out there. Well, there's, they, they're a pair, but one of them absolutely loves Micronauts and he says they're brilliant so i'm really looking forward to this it's again big old run in really good condition can't wait to start this it's going to be awesome and i almost missed one this is micronauts they came from inner space 57. again no nothing of them i can't wait to get more of this and find out what's going on that's right right before pick of the hunt we have a marvel tale starring spider-man the wondrous world Worlds of Doctor Strange. Another classic Spidey story to keep me happy. So this is the moment you've been waiting for. I know it's been a long video, but it has been worth it, I promise. So this is my pick of the hunt. This is Heroes for Hope, starring the X-Men, number one. So why is this so important? Well, this comic was actually done for charity. All the proceeds from this comic book are being donated to famine relief and the recovery in Africa. That's what it says on the front of the comic. It was to raise awareness about the hunger in Africa and all the money was being donated to charity to help. But it wasn't just one artist and one writer doing this book. There were loads of people who worked on this book, loads of the legends who do the artwork, loads of the legends who do the writing for all these comics. And hell, even some writers from outside the comic genre got involved. Two you might know well is George R. R. Martin and Stephen King. That's right. Stephen King got even got involved in this. That's how important this book was and still is. How awesome is this, guys? <sighs> well, oh my God, what did you guys think of that today? I mean, this, you don't find stuff like this just every day. It's, I've been doing this for years and I've never seen this one before. I only know about this because of other people. I've never actually seen this and never actually knew about this before I got it. So, wow, I'm over the moon with today's haul. Absolutely brilliant. What did you think? Let me know down in the comments what you think. What do you think of this? Do you think this should have been my pick of the hunt? Or did you have another one you preferred? Let me know. But enough from me, guys. Remember that you guys are awesome. And I need to get more bags and boards for this sort of stuff. That's just saying. <laughs>